So first of all, let's have a big round of applause for uh, all our stellar speakers and the lineup tonight. Uh, we're going to be starting with, uh, first of all, with Dylan, Dylan Field from uh, the CEO and co-founder of Figma. Dylan has worked at Flipboard and LinkedIn in the past, studied computer science at, uh, at uh, Brown University. So, so yeah, it's really exciting. We're also really excited that Dylan didn't just come alone. It's, uh, we have quite a few of his teammates from Figma that are here tonight. So make sure in the networking time, you know, you catch up with them. If you have any feedback on the product or you're curious about the product or the journey. So yeah, let's give a big round of applause to Dylan Field. Hi everybody, thank you so much for having me. I'm just super thrilled with the team to be in Toronto and uh, still getting to know the scene, so really excited to meet all of you tonight. Uh, if you're from the Figma team, maybe you could wave your hands so that people know who to talk to afterwards as well. Um, just to get a sense of the room, how many people here are designers? How many people here are not designers? There's, okay, so engineers, product, Marketing. Actually, more marketing than I would have expected. UX writers. Anyone who didn't raise their hand for design, but for their, they identify as a researcher. Okay, interesting. Awesome. Well, uh, so tonight I'm so I'm Dylan. I co-founded Figma. Uh, three things I'm going to talk about tonight. Number one is what is Figma. I'm sorry, I'm not going to ship uh, to uh, pitch it too hard, but you're all here. And I feel like I wasn't doing my job if I didn't say a little, a little bit about it. Uh, but I'll keep it brief. And second, I'm going to set this context for sort of how design is changing uh, over the past five years before we jump into the sort of top three key trends of 2018. So uh, first of all, what is Figma? So just a brief history. We founded it in August 2012. Uh, started getting people to pay for it in July 2017. So it's been a long time developing it. Uh, how many people in the room have used the product before? That's awesome. Uh, so if you have feedback for us later, please, we would love to hear it. Um, the uh, sort of like impetus for starting it was that I was, I had been working as an intern at various places. My uh, co-founder, Evan, had also done a lot of software. And uh, it was just always amazing to me that the design tools that we have are not collaborative. And we started looking into uh, how to make it more collaborative to actually work in design, but also how do you make the tools simpler as well? I don't know if any of you have watched somebody use a design tool for the first time recently, because I think it's kind of hard to reach back into your, your memory and to remember the first time that you used a design tool. Uh, but if you watch somebody actually learn a design tool for the first time, it's, it's been incredibly difficult, even today. Uh, and when we started it in August 2012, it was even more difficult because then it was you know, only Photoshop, only Illustrator, uh, or Fireworks at the time, although that crashed quite a bit. Um, <laughs> And uh, so I, I, was, I was really eager to try to figure out how we could get people to work together better, because design is an inherently collaborative role. Uh, you're working with other designers, you're working with engineers, PMs, marketing, and UX writers, research, execs, like everyone wants to have uh, a way to contribute to the design process now. Um, and so that's what we came up with for Figma. You know, it lets you design, collaborate, code, all in one place. And uh, we really explored like a lot of things. So for design in particular, I think uh, you know, there's some things that are, are pretty groundbreaking in Figma, uh, such as our constraints and ways to create responsive designs. The thing I'm most proud of personally on just the individual design side is the vector networks. Uh, if you have ever struggled with the pen tool in Illustrator, definitely check out it in Figma. Uh, it is, uh, it's hopefully much more intuitive to learn how to actually create vector work. Uh, collaborate in real time. So another thing that you can do in Figma is you can actually just send a link to somebody and use it like you use a Google Doc. You can make comments that are in line, uh, and it's just super easy to get started and to be able to pass information back and forth. And finally, uh, making it so that you can actually easily work with developers, UX writers, et cetera, uh, by having it, you know, you have like code handoff as well as prototyping so you can get your information from the people that need it. Um, and so over the past five years, as we've been working on Figma, design has changed a ton. Uh, probably a lot of you have seen it uh, firsthand. How many people have been a designer for uh, five years or more in this room? That's really, and how many people are just starting off they've been a designer for less than a year, just to get a sense of, this is pretty cool, actually, because we've got a really diverse, multifaceted room here. 
Um, so over the past five years, and I'm going to show some data too to back this up, I think that it's the reason that we're seeing so much change in design is really it's a business reason at the end of the day. And I think the reason is that uh, five years ago even, infrastructure was so hard to build, uh, and the development of something alone would make it so that you know, it was, that was the reason to use it. Like, okay, you made it work. That's great, and it's my only option, therefore I will use your software. Uh, and that is just not the case anymore. Our development tools have gotten so much better. Uh, Amazon Web Services has made infrastructure so much easier to deploy the more, you know, over the past decade progressively. And it's basically gone to the point where the main competitive difference here now, as most of you probably in this room know, is design. Uh, and I think that this is something that's, <coughs> the way I think of it is design is like an infection. Uh, the more that uh, basically like people have these expectations they're coming to from consumer devices, uh, or software, and then they go into everything that they interact with day to day with the expectation of good design. And even if people cannot create a good design, uh, they know what is good and what is not good usually. And so if it's not good, they will feel that. And that makes it so that you start to have products that are outside of consumer spaces that uh, actually you know, start to actually cater to the audience and create good design. And once you have one product in a category that has good design, every other competitor has to keep up, because if they don't, they die. Uh, and so that's what I think ends up driving this trend. And uh, just to back this up, uh, to show some data behind this, because I could just say it's, it's you know good thing to say for our business. Uh, we literally have data that shows the number of, of, uh, of designers changing uh, in relative to the number of engineers. So I think the most extreme example on the slide is IBM, which went from one designer to every 72 engineers back in 2012. And now they're at one designer to every eight engineers across the company. And on mobile alone, they're at one designer to every three engineers. Uh, and I think that's the one to eight is a pretty good median ratio as of 2017 when we pulled this data. And actually now I'm actually seeing people uh, be more aggressive in their hiring and it's dropping to more of like a one to five ratio uh, for the most progressive companies. And of course, I'm sure that a lot of people here also work in companies that are lagging with the bell curve. Uh, you know, there's no one number that everyone's at. Um, and so that's the backdrop for sort of the information that I'm going to show tonight around three key trends in design. Uh, the first one is actually is where's Thomas Lowry? Can you stand up and just wave for a second? So uh, last night I was talking with Thomas and we were catching up, and uh, he dropped this line that was amazing. It was we're moving from handoff to handshake, and I was like, oh my gosh, Thomas, is it okay if I steal that? I'm going to put it up on this slide. Uh, and uh, and he said yes. That's why he was very gracious about it. And what I mean by that is, again, design is collaborative. It's in the center of all these different uh, workflows. And we're still, yet we're still throwing designs over the wall. How many people in the last year or two have made a red line? More than they should. And, uh, and hopefully less with tools like Figma, with tools like Zeppelin, uh, Avacode. But uh, I think this is still a process that a lot of people are going through. And then, in addition, uh, coffee is, you know, it, it's, the workflow is terrible right now. And I think we need these cross-functional sources of truth uh, for design and for interactions with design files. Uh, so what do I mean by that? So one example that I really like is actually from Airbnb. I suspect a lot of people have seen this. It's our competitor in terms of an integration sketch, but I think it's really worth showing off because it's a really great example of what you can do if you make code the source of truth. Uh, I think it's also fine if we make design the source of truth, like this is our shared library system in Figma. Um, but I think it's really important to have a source of truth that you can go back to at the end of the day. Uh, otherwise, people are going from thing to thing, and we have all these fragments in our digital lives of, of different tools and where data is stored. And if you don't actually have a place to go to, uh, whether it's for coffee, whether it's for engineering, whatever, uh, then it's actually quite hard to get work done. And what we've seen is that people have massive productivity gains, like 75% is what people tell us sometimes for coffee uh, when they actually consolidate these workflows, which is, which is amazing. And it's really interesting because designers will like Sigma, but then we'll get people that are outside of design that will be our biggest advocates. Um, second one is that design is power. Uh, and I, I think this is a really interesting trend. Um, I think companies evolve in sort of three stages. And, I, and uh, if I'm going to say anything that you like, oh, we're stage one, that's okay. Although there are, as you've seen before, a lot of people looking for, uh, for designers, so you can always switch. Um, 
And uh, I think this first stage that a company's design teams are at is usually misunderstanding. And it's sort of the, uh, could you just make this pretty phase? And uh, I think that uh, obviously design is a lot more than that. Um, I think the stage two that people get to is sort of where design actually has a seat at the table for major decisions. Uh, and then design is sort of consulted and used as a resource uh, uh, for, for making decisions about the product, making decisions about the way their company is run. Uh, but I think that we're rapidly approaching, and some companies are already at a third phase, which is where non-designers actually want a seat at the table. Uh, and what I mean by that is that I think that actually as companies start to grow up and realize that to my previous point, the design is so powerful, so important, that non-designers actually will come to the design teams and say, I want to be involved in this process more. Uh, that can mean anything from, I want to be in the, you know, at the table where you make decisions, to I want to actually be participating in your, in your design process quite literally. And I think it's a really interesting question that we as designers have to grapple around is, uh, will we give the seat up? Uh, not up as in like it's a zero sum thing, but like will we be inclusive of the rest of the people in our companies that want to actually work with us? And I think that at the end of the day, if you can make it so that more people in the company are doing design work than just outside, just inside the design team, if you can expand your reach to outside the design team, then you're able uh, to make it so that your company has more of a chance of succeeding. And I think it's a, it's a really interesting question that we need to think about as a community because, um, you know, it's, it, we saw the same thing with engineering a decade ago. It's really hard to sort of give up your Legos to give people a chance to actually impact, especially when this is a few years ago, we were all at the misunderstanding phase. Uh, and we had to justify our existence every day. And so uh, I think this is, you know, looking forward, one of the more interesting questions for design in general across the world. Um, the third one, which kind of goes to the first two trends, is design systems. Uh, and this is something that I think people that are, whether you're an individual or you're part of a giant enterprise, you will be touching in some way. You know, the design systems, historically, this is not a new trend. If you've driven down a road, if you use public transit, you've interacted with design systems. If you use any major software OS ever, you interact with design systems. Uh, you know, the two that we probably interact with most today are around like iOS uh, and material design. And I think there's also increasingly design systems that are being created uh, in enterprise. And um, the benefits of design systems to me are sort of threefold. First, I, I don't think I have to make a case for this one, uh, but consistency is good. Uh, I, if you want to debate that with me afterwards, I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, but uh, the second one that I will make more of a case for is that actually increases velocity. I think there's other questions that need to be grappled with here around how do you make sure that you're still evolving as a design system? How do you make sure that you're constantly iterating and giving people ways to be creative? Uh, but I actually think it is an act of creativity to, to use parts and assemble, not just to create the parts in the first place. And by making it so you have a design system, uh, you're able to have more velocity across your entire organization. The third one is collaboration. I think it gets you to the point where more people can be involved, first in your design team, but secondly, outside of your design team. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, and it's, again, something that I think everyone will grapple with, but as design systems get more built out, that's, I think, going to be one of the most interesting parts uh, and implications of design systems. Uh, today, I think that, you know, there's also, I think design systems today are, are still weaker than they will be in a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. Today, I mean, in Figma, for example, design systems really are components in a shared library. But obviously, design systems are way more than this. Uh, you know, soon our products and our tools will allow us to have design systems that interact more with styles, with type, and also with grids and with layouts. Eventually, I think that we'll have design systems that help us with copying, with brand, with understanding like what's in, what's out, and validation. Uh, I think also this with development workflows. I think there's even weird and interesting possibilities for getting AI involved in design systems, uh, which is kind of like another thing we can talk about for a long time. Uh, and yeah, I think there's just so much we can do with design systems, ultimately. Uh, it also raises some really interesting questions. Like I referenced before, is there still room to be creative when you have a design system laid out? And who gets to uh, sort of create the components in the first place? Secondly, what does it mean for the future of design uh, and of designers? Like how does the role change as we start to adhere to design systems within enterprise use cases? And finally, I think this is one of the most interesting cases, is how do we involve communities in the creation of design systems? 
So uh, can we have global type systems? Can we make it so that more people can contribute those? And how do we handle licensing? Uh, these are some of the things that we're thinking about at Figma around design systems. Anyway, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here.